So what exactly is a perfect parry window? And for every attack in the game, what is the precise moment to parry in? To find out, I recorded and analyzed a metric shit ton of gameplay footage, synced up with controller inputs against a variety of enemies and attacks. I compiled data on different timings of L1 presses and what result it led to. Using this data, I was able to test against various theories and ultimately reverse engineer exactly what the perfect parry window is. The first part of this video will explain the mechanics of what a perfect parry window actually is and how it works. Then after that, I'm going to show you the precise perfect parry window for each attack in the game. You'll be able to use this as a reference to learn how to parry each enemy, and if there's a specific attack giving you trouble, just find it in the chapters listed in the description and jump right to it. I'm going to go pretty deep and technical here, but you don't need this level of detail in order to perfect parry. If you just want to see the windows for each attack and don't care how it all works, skip ahead to the attack section of this video. Let's start by breaking down all of the parts of a melee. There are three phases. The before phase, the attack phase, and the result phase. The attack phase begins the moment an enemy switches into an attack animation. From there, they proceed through the attack animation until the action point, which is the moment where the game reveals the result of the attack. And this result depends on what you had done during four different windows. There's a block window, a parry window, a perfect parry window, and a damage window. There is also a perfect dodge window, but this video is only going to focus on parries, so perhaps we'll cover dodging in a later video. All of these windows follow each other, one after another. The block window is before the attack phase. Once they switch into an attack animation, they are now in the parry window, which goes all the way until the perfect parry window, which is followed by the damage window, which fills the remainder of the attack phase. If you press L1 in the block window and hold it all the way through to the action point, then at the action point, you'll do a block. If you start your L1 hold in the parry window, at the action point, you'll parry. And if you do L1 in the parry, perfect parry window, then you'll do a perfect parry at the action point. And finally, if you don't hit L1 or you start it too late in the damage window, then you'll receive damage at the action point. Now there are some cases where the, there are different sets of windows. If the attack is unblockable with a blue glint, the block window becomes a damage window. Or if you're using some legendary gear that disables normal parries, the parry window also becomes a damage window. And of course, with red glinting attacks, everything becomes a damage window, leaving only dodge windows. But again, in this video we're not covering dodge, so we won't cover any of the red glinting attacks either. I keep mentioning the action point. But what do I mean precisely? Just a reminder that I'm going pretty deep on the technical level here. For those that are interested, you do not need to understand all of this in order to parry well. All right, if you look at the same attack, but with four different results, the action point is this frame right here. For blocks, parry, and perfect parry, it is when this gold yellow circle of light appears. And for damage, it's when the screen turns red. Up until that moment, regardless of when you hit L1, the attack animation is basically the same and will run all the way into this point. The result isn't really revealed until this moment. This is what I refer to as the action point, and as you'll see in a moment, it is a useful point for anchoring an exact definition of the parry window. Okay, now we're finally ready to actually talk about the perfect parry window. Let's jump back half a second before the action point. Each line is showing an increment of 100 milliseconds, or a tenth of a second. The perfect parry window appears to start at 300 milliseconds before the action point and go until 200 milliseconds before the action point, a total duration of 100 milliseconds, or a tenth of a second. That's an incredibly short moment. Just to illustrate this, let's back this attack all the way up and play it at normal speed, and flash white during the perfect parry window. And one more time. So that's a perfect parry window, and before it is a parry window, and after it is the damage window. And every attack appears to follow this rule, regardless of the length of the attack. So how can we use this information? It's not like we can count 300 milliseconds before something happens. Well, instead of thinking about this in terms of time, we can look at it in terms of frames. The PlayStation 4 renders 30 frames per second, which means each frame will be on the screen for about 33 and one third milliseconds. So one frame before is at 33 and one third milliseconds, two frames before starts at 66 and two thirds milliseconds, 
and three frames before the action point starts at 100 milliseconds. We can continue to count this way all the way back up and see which frames line up with that perfect peri window. Now we can see that frames 9, 8, and 7 line up nicely with that perfect peri window. So to find a perfect peri window for a particular attack, we just need to look at what the enemy is doing during those frames. Once we've picked out a good sign to look for, then we can practice parrying at that moment in game. This works really well, but there are a couple factors that are worth calling out that impact this. First, frame shift. Games aren't always going to render their frames as precisely. Sometimes frames might be a little ahead or might be a little behind. For example, sometimes part of frame 9 might fall into the parry window. The second factor is input latency, which is the amount of time it takes for your controller to register a button press, communicate it to your console, and for the game to register it. This happens so fast that normally it isn't something you'd ever have to think about, but we are dealing with extremely short amounts of time. Even a few milliseconds along the edge of this window can make a difference to where it falls. So given these factors, if we're only looking at frames and not at time, you can't just say that these three frames will always be perfect. It's a bit more of a curve of probability, with frame 8 being the highest chance, and frames 9 and 7 also being really good. These shifts can also work in your favor, where some frames before or after on some rare occasion could perform a perfect parry. The last factor to consider is reaction time. Again, something you normally don't need to consider, but since we're talking about very small amounts of time, it is worth mentioning. There is an amount of time from your eye seeing a frame, deciding to hit L1, your finger moving to hit L1, and the button going down. So in order for the button to land in frame 8, you may actually want to look for a sign in an earlier frame. Maybe you want to look at what the enemy is doing at frame 10, or 11, etc. This is going to be different for everyone. I found for myself just aiming for frame 8 seems to work with practice. Somehow my brain works out the difference. The visualizations I'll share later have frames numbered, so you can just look for the frame that ends up working best for you. But before we get to those, one last mechanic to cover. Gear that increases your perfect parry window. For example, in Legends, you can increase your window by upwards of 36%. How does this impact the size of the window? I have to admit, I don't quite fully understand the math of it yet, but I can tell you a few things with certainty. The window increases in this direction. It does not let you parry later, only earlier. It increases way more than you would think. It isn't 36% of 100 milliseconds, which would only add a frame or two. In fact, with 36% perfect parry increase, you can perfect parry all the way out to frame 20 in some cases. That's a huge window, and for some attacks it covers its entire attack phase. Lastly, it doesn't just increase the perfect window, it increases the parry window as well. If you hold L1 before the attack begins, you can now parry instead of block. If I figure out the exact logic and math of this, I'll let you know, but for now that's as much as I can share with any confidence. Now the rest of this video is going to show the exact perfect parry frames for over 50 different attacks. That will pretty much cover every parryable attack in the game, however I did not go through every duel and boss in the game, so there may be some attacks that only show up there that I missed. But as you'll see, many enemies do share the same attacks, so many dual attacks will be covered here anyways. Since there are so many attacks, the way that I am kind of intending you to use this is to go into the chapter sections and links in the description and jump right to the attack that you care about. They are organized by weapon since many enemies share the same attacks. Each attack will start with a title screen with the weapon and the name of the attack. If the attack is typically a combo of multiple strikes, each strike is separated by a comma. It also mentions what enemy variants use these attacks. It will show multiple angles of the same attack, and along the top you'll see the frame number being shown as a countdown to the action point. The colors of the bar at the top indicate the probability of what would happen if you started holding L1 in that frame. Blue means normal parry, green means perfect parry, and red means damage. So here the bar is fully blue, so that means if you start holding L1 in this frame, it's a 100% chance just going to be a normal parry. And here, since it's mostly green, but partly red, that means you'll most likely do a perfect parry, but there's a small chance that if you hold L1 from this frame, you'll take damage instead. The three frames that have the highest chance of doing a perfect parry get these white highlights when they're showing. 
If the attack is a combo made up of several attacks, it will play through the whole combo. Note that with combo attacks, each attack in the combo is its own attack and has its own windows. You'll see the windows for each one. This will play through the whole sequence at normal speed a few times, and then a few times in slow-mo. I have it go at normal speed so that you can use YouTube speed controls to slow down this video down to the speed that you prefer. To do that, use the gear icon or the settings icon and find the playback speed option. You can change it to a bunch of different options. If you are watching from a computer, even better, you can use spacebar to pause and then use the comma and period keys to walk frame by frame. That will give you the best control. Remember that you're aiming to hit L1 in frame 8. So use these to look for a signal or sign in what the enemy is doing that you can use to know when to parry in game. And also remember, based on reaction time, you may need to pick a frame before 8 for best results. When you're practicing, remember the four windows follow each other. Block, then parry, then perfect, then damage. So if you keep doing a normal parry, try hitting L1 a tiny bit later. If you keep taking damage, try a tiny bit earlier. Also when practicing, do not use gear that increases the window. That'll just give you such a large window that you won't actually get better at finding the precise moment. And one final tip, when practicing in Legends, use the Sacred Iron Charm with damage reduction and leeching parry. Also a healing gourd with damage reduction. That will really help you practice again and again without dying a ton. Okay, that's it. Hope it was helpful. And without further ado, here are the perfect parry windows for every attack. Go! 
Okay, I'm going to pop in and give some commentary on this one. This one is an outlier in that it has variable timing. The animation during the perfect parry window is not consistent. This is the attack where they wave the spear over their head and then close any distance between you before lunging. Here are four examples of them starting the attack from different distances away. If we look at the perfect parry moment, they all have their spears in different positions. So this one is pretty hard to parry just by looking at the frames. The closest shared sign I can see is when they shift their weight from their right foot before the final lunge, but even that isn't 100%. It might be worth thinking about different distances, almost as different attacks for this one. Oni Lords also have a variant of this they use as a fast follow-up strike. I'll show that separately because at least in that context it does have a consistent speed. <laughs> Alright, this one also needs some commentary. There's definitely something really weird about this one. It either has a bug, or they intentionally made it very, very difficult to par perfect parry. The weirdest thing is that if you increase your perfect parry window, this attack gets even harder to perfect parry. It, it actually increases the damage window instead of the perfect parry window. In all of the footage I have of this attack, I've only seen perfect parry happen once, and it did happen right where it's supposed to in frame 8, but most of the time it just acts like the perfect parry window was actually replaced by a damage window. Curious if anyone knows a trick for this one, because it's quite baffling to me. What's up, bear? What's up? You perfect parry master. You gonna fuck with me? Bring it on. L1! L1! 